so we have our St. Louis style ribs here that uh, we're starting to clean up. As you can see, I knocked off some thin ribs off of this side and some short ones off of this side. There's not a whole lot of meat on here and they're not gonna cook very well whatsoever. So I took these off and I set them to the side. We'll get some meat out of them for sausages. Um, I see some of this down here that probably needs to come off as well. You know, a lot of people, they take off their uh, membrane off the back of the ribs. We don't do that. We cook them at a specific temperature in a certain way that this basically is impartial to the cook. So we'll go ahead and leave that on there. And uh, I knocked a little bit of extra stuff off here that was kind of flabby. But uh, I'll give you all a better look at that on this next one here. So you can see that these ribs are real thin and there's just nothing going on there. If you keep them on there and you just keep them on there for the sake of that, you're going to end up trying to cook these ribs, you know, like babying this instead of, you know, the good ones that are, you know, in there. So I'll go ahead and take these off. Same thing on this side. Like no one wants that. Like if you were served that, you'd be upset. I'd be upset to cook that. So we'll take that off. Well, the rack generally kind of tells you where it wants to be trimmed. Um, you can kind of see that there's a little, little something, something in here. It's thick towards this side, so I'm going to go ahead and keep it on. But on this side, it's just really thin, and there's not a whole lot going on. So I'll go ahead and just take that off. And they really don't need a whole lot of work. Uh, these do come pre-trimmed, but uh, obviously, with how many they're doing, they uh, miss little things like this. So, uh, yeah, something like that on your rib trim, make the customer happy. So on the ribs, you've got A, B, C, and D on these guys when you're looking at a hog, whenever you butcher one, butcher one out. So as you can see, this is a St. Louis cut that's derived from a full spare. If we flip it over, this part is part of the sternum or the breastbone, right? This would be the middle section of the rib cage. Below this, bearing in mind that this is in the middle and this is part of the, the sternum, then below here is gonna be the brisket flap, which is what you also find on the back of this guy, which is extended towards the diaphragm. North of this, when you hear the expression eating high on the hog, that means that's the, more, that's the better cut. And you're getting up towards uh, the baby back ribs and behind that rib, behind that is the loin, then you have the rib tip here, and then you have a rib tip here. So. Yes, sir, you learn something every day, y'all. Barbecue is a lifelong lesson, and I'll take all the ones I can get. So I always like to make my make sure my seasoning's broken up, no clumps. Our seasoning's got a good amount of brown sugar in it, so it will have the tendency to do so, but uh, it's no big deal. Yeah. Shoulder height, uh, rapid succession back and forth, just allowing all the seasonings to fall where they need to. Just that wrist action, right? It takes yes, years sure. of, to perfect. And look at how even it goes on here. Folks, when you're at home, you can use a shaker. You don't have to do what Bobby does. He does this every day, so he knows how to do it with one arm and one eye. And all of Harry's rubs, once you're through with them, they make excellent shakers. They got uh, perfect hole sizes. <laughs> you notice he did the bone side first, now he's doing the meat side. And you know, I know it doesn't add a whole lot, but I always flip to where I'm going. Now that we have them done, we have this additional seasoning on the sides. What I like to do is, is hit the sides, make sure that uh, you know anything that might be clumped up on the top comes off. If you're looking for something like that. You always want to hit your sides, y'all. Translates. All right, folks. Here's a black belt tip from Pitmaster Bobby. Face to face. Look at that. So that's how you stack ribs. I've been doing it all wrong all these years. <laughs> so. It just prevents us from having to season additionally on top of the pit. Um, that makes a lot of sense because you want the rub on the meat side not to be anywhere compromised. Not at the, all. the one on the bone, not, not so critical. No, no sir. All right, so we'll go ahead and get these on. So Sentex has been firing up. And started up here. Now you like to load it on a Sentex sweet spot. Uh, I believe the whole pit runs pretty evenly. Um, I like the bottom rack. Um, this door I kind of reserve for chickens, a little hot and faster. 
So what I do is when I put on ribs, I always want to make sure they're scrunched up when I put them on. Because how you place something on the pit, it's going to set up that way. So make sure they're scrunched. Also, when you go to put something on the pit, try not to drag it. Make sure you place it. I'll see a lot of folks that like drag oh, their ribs. Rock and now, roll. Now that these are on here, um, we're just going to shut it up and not touch anything for about an hour and a half. This is fat side towards the fire, bone side up. Um, we're going to build into our heat. It's going to allow the uh, seasonings to set. It's going to let the smoke ring develop and uh, it'll make some happy ribs. In the beginning of a cook, I'm really not worried about where to start it at all. Um, I'll get about like, I'll say about six logs. And uh, once these burn down to coals is when I'll start to worry about temperature. So the initial fire is uh, pretty impartial. Um, to what temperature it's throwing. Um, I just want to burn it down to coals. I'm looking for some heavier pieces in the beginning so they do turn into good coals. Um, but from here, what I'll do is, is um, I'll leave this wide open, let it burn down, and then I'm gonna pick out some lighter pieces which uh, can more accurately uh, give you a temperature you're looking for. But once this burns down, I'm gonna start looking for 225-ish. Once it stops to fall below 225, I'll go up to 250. Once it starts to go below 250, we'll go 275 and we'll finish somewhere in there. Um, above 275 is fine to finish uh, as long as it's below 300. You want to kind of avoid the 300 mark a little bit because uh, you, that brown sugar, you really got to take care of it. Um, it will scorch on you. So uh, there's some things that we can do to mitigate that. We do like um, a good amount of color on our ribs opposed to most folks. They'll wrap in foil um, once their seasoning sets. But... Um, we don't mind a little extra stink on our ribs. Uh, customers really like it. The glaze sets it off. And uh, we, we don't do foil if we can help it. Uh, we'll just run them naked the whole entire time. It really just depends on uh, what's going on in the pit. But uh, some of my best ribs cooks are definitely uh, no foil. Just totally on the pit naked. So we got our ribs uh, rotated 180 degrees. Um, they got... The color that I'm looking for on this side, I'm just gonna look for that color on the other side. We'll probably let them go for another hour and a half, and then uh, we'll think about spinning them long ways. Building into that heat slowly but surely though. So our ribs have kind of got the uh, appropriate amount of color on the other side of them. So what we're gonna try to do is fill it in uh, by spinning them long ways. This pit runs really even, but one thing I will kind of do is I'll probably get this one here and trade it with these two up here. Just kind of shuffle them, get the ones that were further away closer and the ones that were closer further. So we'll go ahead and do that. So you kind of space it out, right? Depending on how thick it is, so you want to yeah. go evenly. So the thicker ones go towards the fire. Towards the fire, yes sir. the deal is, right? Yes sir. Yeah. I don't know if it's how I manage my fire or how the pit runs, but everything that's back there on this side of this crossbar basically bisects this pit it'll uh cook faster and towards the end if we have a couple that are lagging behind um we'll just put them on either side of this crossbar and they'll finish up in no time so what we're looking for is uh two pieces of wood that we've been kind of avoiding in our stack um they're heavier they also got some bark on them and uh generally you don't want to use like super super heavy wood it's not that it's green or anything um it's just probably some heart pieces and so what i'll go ahead and do is i see these ribs are getting a good amount of color on the edges already but uh, i do want it to fill in so what i'm gonna go ahead and do is is i'm gonna get these two logs i'm gonna put them bark towards the fire so when the smoke and heat hits it it's gonna travel down and uh, kind of skate across the ribs but it is kind of give it a crutch and so what i'll do is i'll just slide that in there like that same with this one slide that one in there like that but also Tomorrow when I go to light my pit, these two logs will catch like that. And uh, it'll make for a really easy fire starting in the morning just because these logs will be totally dried out and uh, ready to rock and roll. So ribs are approaching their doneness. I typically go by feel on my ribs. Um, we see a little bit of sizzle on these. Like you can see that they're starting to sizzle a little bit, which is exactly what I'm looking for. Um, secondly, I'm looking for the bend that we do got here. And then I always, make sure that this is nice and rendered out. And I'm gonna go ahead and throw this log on. And y'all can watch how quickly this one ignites. So if you ever feel like you have wet wood or 
wood that's green you can fill up your whole pit with uh with the wood and it'll do the trick for you so we're looking for kind of a, ma a mahogany color but we also kind of do like a little bit of darkness on our ribs um like i said with that you know close to 50 percent brown sugar in that rub you really got to take care of it and we just rolled these roll low and slow man they came out great. finished them a little hot but they held up well looking good and this is pre-glaze so wait till we get the glaze on them all right guys we are here with our slabs that are at an appropriate temperature to start glazing them we have our mango serrano glaze that we're going to apply i always go around the edges first make sure it's on every bite and then fill in just let these hang out until a customer comes and we will slice into these and uh Hopefully serve some happy customers, y'all. Thank you for uh, watching my rib tutorial video. Um, if y'all want to come try these ribs, uh, you're going to have to come out to uh, Brotherton's Black Iron Barbecue in Pflugerville, Texas. Um, either myself or John will be working the block. Be sure to say hello. And uh, if you have any questions, be sure to uh, ask them down below. Like, subscribe, all of that good news. Um, also, give me a follow on uh, the Instagram. It's going to be BobbyQ512. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-U-E-512. And if y'all want uh, me to make more videos, y'all go ahead and uh, hit the like button. Uh, let Harry know in the comments and uh, we'll keep this train rolling. So in case y'all are wondering, we're gonna give a couple of these bones to Mr. Beans that's back in California so uh, he can enjoy some of uh, this Brotherson's Black Iron Barbecue as well.